Jacob. Mm. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. Asante sana. Mm. Your writing has really been uh, impactful in my life. Mm. It's that kind of writing that has first of all made me think about my own life as a young man. Okay. First things first. Mm. Maybe just a brief introduction of who Jacob is. Yeah, so thank you for having me. It's an honor and a privilege. Mm-hmm. Um I'm an author of 14 books now. Unplugged is the seventh one. Is the seventh book? Yeah, it's my seventh book. 14 books. Yeah, 14 books. Well, okay. Yeah, so at some point I really went beast mode. I think in 2022 I wrote four books. Unplugged mm-hmm. is one of them. I wrote Transference, I wrote uh, A Slice of Darkness for Breakfast. And then the one for Kevin Samuels also was a, an e-book, but mm-hmm. I included it as a chapter in Unplugged. So father of two, married, I work as an IT project manager. So I'm an IT professional trained as a developer, uh system analyst mm-hmm. and uh, right now mainly I do project management for mobile applications, mm-hmm. iOS, Android uh, and uh, USSD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so writing basically is like a side gig, it's something I do on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh but it's where my passion is. Uh initially I was writing about fiction. My first seven books, uh, books, uh, first six books are books of fiction. Mm-hmm. Uh I stumble on unplugged because of what happened after covid. Mm-hmm. I have a number of friends uh who got divorced. So I started researching on marriage, intersexual dynamics. And what I stumbled on I realized many people don't have this information or knowledge. So I went into evolutionary psychology and intersexual dynamics and uh so that was the birth of unplugged. Mm-hmm. And um it was not easy initially because unplugged uh When I wrote Unplugged, I lost, I lost a number of friends. One thing many guys don't know, mm-hmm. uh, women generally read more than men. True. So, yeah, True. so mm-hmm. most of my followers on Facebook were actually women when I was writing fiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when uh, when I wrote Unplugged, I lost a number of them. But the good thing is what I gained by far surpasses what I lost. Mm-hmm. Because... Um, other than the monetary aspect because unplugged has really been selling mm-hmm. uh there's the influence there's the respect and uh uh people sort of uh came to real recognize me as an authority even the authors and even in universities and institutions of learning uh they pay attention i'm aware that uh, for example there have been people who've quoted unplugged in uh in law thesis and uh, people who are in sociology I've also referred to unplugged uh so even in higher learning they've mm-hmm. recognized and I think it's because I took a very scholastic approach when mm-hmm. writing unplugged I made sure that um I reference authorities when it comes to endocrinology evolutionary psychology history uh, religion and so on so uh, it has been a very interesting journey uh it has made me go into areas that I was not into before like being a speaker uh being a coach being a mentor and things like that yeah so and the plug actually is what has brought me here also hey true 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 because yeah. anyway i actually like during mandamano mm. there's a guy i came across mm. just along um, just around java here at kimathiwe mm. and i think i tagged in that photo oh yeah guy, i saw it yeah the guy will come over a t-shirt and plugged and i was mm. asking this guy do you know what you're wearing my friend and mm. he's like you like he wasn't really aware of what he's actually wearing okay but the guy had a t-shirt written and plugged for me unplugged has uh, been that book okay. that has really opened up my mind mm. especially in areas masculinity taking care of yourself as a man quick question mm. your diary mm. is sorry this is the unplugged diary yes a good uh, diary that you've given to me and thank you for the hoodie again you're welcome a woman's tears are only genuine when she's alone mm. can you explain that because <laughs> i've tried to to think about it a mm. woman's tears are only genuine when she's alone yeah so mm-hmm. This is of course some of the things that uh, even the ladies don't like when you talk about eh? mm-hmm. but um crying comes very easy for women mm-hmm. and uh uh this is something they learn particularly when they are growing up mm-hmm. that when you want certain outcomes you can easily we normally call them the waterworks you turn down, you turn on the waterworks mm-hmm. so a woman can easily cry of course uh for various reasons and the society of course encourages it for example 
if you as a man your boss shouts at you at work mm-hmm. and then you go and start crying people will tell you you're being very silly you're can you be baby. serious yeah you being a baby mm-hmm. but a woman can cry because her boss shouted at her and people will tell her sorry don't worry it will be okay and so on your boss is toxic yeah your boss is toxic and so on so we, in our interactions with uh, with the women mm-hmm. um when you're growing up for example you can be told uh, maybe by your mother or an older woman or a sister that uh, never make uh, your wife or your girlfriend cry mm-hmm. and so when you grow up and you see the tears of a woman uh, you think it's a serious crisis mm-hmm. but you see when 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 women are interacting or even when uh, when uh, when a woman is advising her brother Uh, about how to manage a wife or a girlfriend they'll be able to tell you that those tears they're just manipulative they are not real don't let them don't let uh, don't let her play with you or manipulate you because those tears are not genuine mm. so women by themselves they know they know that they can shed crocodile tears of course yeah but these are things that men are not taught mm-hmm. so for many men uh like when you when you catch her maybe red handed cheating on you for example mm. then she starts crying and tells you that it was not a mistake you're accusing me you don't trust me then you you turn it on yourself and realize oh okay maybe she this is not what i think it was because mm. she's crying mm. therefore i must be very wrong about her mm. so those are the things we are teaching men that the fact that you are seeing her crying tears does not prove maybe innocence or pain and so on and so forth women normally can use tears to to misdirect you mm. or to change the the conversation the way it is going into a different direction so that is the point uh when she cries in your presence it could be she is crying to get a certain outcome mm-hmm. so don't necessarily take those tears to have any deeper meaning than than just tears oh yeah all right yeah, yeah. that's quite interesting anyway mm. i found it that, that's the first thing that I, when i opened this diary mm. that is what actually hit me first mm. and uh, anyway that's a nice explanation mm. but unplugged these one two and three mm. someone like um I also recently did a TikTok video mm. and I was telling guys mm. that most of you guys out here are actually emasculated mm. and again most of us are actually so blue pilled. Mm. I was actually one of those individuals who was so blue pilled. And in unplugged 1, uh, 2 and 3, mm. I'm currently reading unplugged 3. Okay. I've read 1 and 2. And one of the things that actually comes out so strongly mm. is uh, the blue pill theory that has been affecting so many men. Mm. And you as an author, good thing you're here today. Mm. Is it possible for you to demystify first mm. of all unplugged one? Mm. Because I think everyone should first get that copy mm. of unplugged one, especially for men. Yeah. Same same case I've seen some few women out there fighting you, you know. Mm. Champion, you know, masculinity at uh, today is actually fought in terms of it's toxic. Mm. Uh, but something like something that protects men is not something that most people actually get. Yeah. maybe they want actually shared mm. maybe you can actually just share a few pointers mm. on unplugged one yeah or probably two and three well, mm. let's just talk talk about unplugged because yeah. anyway it's unplugged eh? yes yes yes, yes. Mm-hmm. so uh the current trend mm-hmm. is that when a woman advises other women mm-hmm. she said she's empowering them mm-hmm. when a man advises other men he's either inciting them or making them toxic mm-hmm. so that is part of the way men are being silenced in the society and uh, it sort of kills masculinity but uh, i think there's a sense in which uh, our ancestors probably understood this because you find that like among cultures that had circumcision mm. the men or the boys were taken away maybe into a forest or at least removed from the presence of women so that they can be advised or guided mm. about what being a man is about True. because women tend to intrude into conversations that men are having and uh, if you see that in social media even in the last uh, uh, unplugged men's meetup uh, which we held in Garden Estate mm. many women were saying they also want to come and they want to listen they are saying we are not, we won't say anything but let us just come and see it and so on and so forth okay so it is part of female nature they are very curious mm-hmm. uh, but they also tend to you know one thing which i have also written in the diary mm-hmm. the success of one gender's sexual strategy mm-hmm is normally predicated on the ignorance of the, the ignorance other genders of the yeah. yes uh-huh. so women don't want you to be 
knowledgeable or aware about their sexual strategies mm-hmm. because when you know their sexual strategies like mm-hmm. the one we just talked about of tears yes then you'll be able to see through their game or through their lies so mm-hmm. they don't want that mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so unplugged um before i wrote unplugged by there i felt very sorry for myself because i was also very blue pill <laughs> and uh i could see the mistakes that i made mm-hmm. in my life in my relationships and uh particularly in my life because mm-hmm. you see as a man eh, mm-hmm. Um your the the way you the way you manage your life is often reflected in your relationships. True. Sometimes when we have bad relationships we think we have a bad life, but mm-hmm. most times you have a bad relationship because you're not managing your life properly as mm-hmm. a man. So the bad relationship is normally a symptom mm-hmm. of a problem that you're already having and not addressing. Mm-hmm. So unplugged is about making men uh centered on on a purpose on their identity and on understanding what it is to be a man of course so one thing that uh i think we've suffered a lot as men is that um we go to school with girls up to university and we think we are like women mm-hmm. in the sense that we think it's just the sexual organs that are different about us but the differences are much much deeper than just the genders even how we think even now we are structured the way we are built is completely different from women and the capabilities that we have are completely different but you know when you are in school you are we are being taught and being managed as if we are the same we are not the same at all mm. so that is the same thing i'm trying to bring out in unplugged i want guys to understand that within you are so many things that have made you a performance machine a mm. machine that is meant and geared for success true and uh that's what i'm trying to awaken in men and uh, and i'm so glad mm-hmm. surprisingly uh i'm surprised but also very happy that for so many guys it has changed their lives mm. like there are guys who've just read unplugged and their life has turned 360 degrees from who they were and that was actually my my desire even myself unplugged has changed me mm. because as i as i wrote and i studied about the book i could see where i went wrong i could see the mistakes i'm making and i was able to start changing my life so my li- unplugged is about men realizing that they are uh, you know kevin someone used to say that uh, pressure was made for shoulders not for hips true we are supposed to embrace the burden of performance mm-hmm. as men we are supposed to make ourselves our mental point of origin because blue pill uh, blue pill thinking or psychology which you find in romance novels in books in soap operas in mm. music and so on it tells you you're supposed to listen to your woman yes um i think there's one guy who sang when a woman's fed up is it i think was it r kelly i think it's r kelly mm. he thinks he tells you about when a woman is fed up the way she, the thing she's going to do mm-hmm. so some of these songs when you listen to them mm. they tell you that you should listen to the woman of course and uh, many men have grown up thinking mm-hmm that for you to have success in relationships it's about listening to the woman yes and so many men have actually shut down the voices in themselves so even when you have your instinct for example your wife is telling you i'm going out with my girlfriends mm-hmm. you see and she comes out at uh, at 4am mm-hmm. now i'm talking about married guys yes she comes at 4am some of them don't even have their panties on okay their mm-hmm. panties in the handbag mm-hmm. but this guy mm-hmm. he has learned to shut down his voices mm-hmm. the voices in his head until when the wife just tells him a lie like what's happening he tells you no i got tired i was feeling what i removed it mm. he tells ah okay so that's a good answer <laughs> so men uh, and and when we struck up we look at the stories for example of um someone like sample samson of manoa in the bible yes uh we normally say that when he was dealing with delilah mm-hmm. he no likelihood there were instincts that were telling him this woman is not the good woman for you mm-hmm. you should not trust this woman don't tell her this but he he suppressed his mm-hmm. voices mm-hmm. so unplugged is about you learn to listen to yourself you learn to make yourself your mental point of origin mm-hmm. what that normally means and and this is something many men also struggle with being your mental point of origin does not mean you become selfish yes it just means when you wake up in the morning mm-hmm. the first thought you should have is about yourself before you think about somebody else mm-hmm. so and we use the example of the flight when you're in the flight you're told if there's a problem put on your oxygen mask mm-hmm. before you put it on onto somebody else yes. so it's about enlightened self-interest so you realize that 
when you take care of yourself mm-hmm. then you can take care of others yes but you see blue pill till teaches you that you need to take care of other people mm-hmm. and many men have done that to their detriment and you forget about yourself you forget about yourself mm-hmm. that's why you find guys who are overweight someone is is fat is lazy uh because he thinks if he pays all the bills and gives his wife money and everything that she wants mm-hmm. If he doesn't take care of said it's still okay. The mm-hmm. wife is going to be happy. But those guys are normally left. Mm-hmm. Actually, that is one of the things that I saw uh, after the COVID because some of these guys are not abusing their wives. They are not, they have money and so on. They're very good guys. Yeah, they are good guys. But mm-hmm. because they forgot about themselves, mm-hmm. they abandoned themselves. Mm-hmm. The women also ended up abandoning themselves. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm teaching guys about being your own mental point of origin, mm-hmm. uh, taking care of uh, yourself, taking care of the burden of performance, mm-hmm. and also things like outcome independence. Mm-hmm. Outcome independence is something also we are also not taught. And outcome independence basically means uh, if you decide that you want to pursue something, mm-hmm. you need to, don't let your ego get out of the way. You see, for example, for me, I had to write six books over the course of, I started in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. So those are five years. Mm. 